So now that we talked about um, what schemata is in the last video and beforehand, kind of like on the importance of forming impressions based of warmth and competence, I would like to combine these two because warmth and competence can be kind of used as organizing principles that fill somehow and shape the, um, the content of these schemata. So schemata are very useful in a way to think about when we think about, okay, why... Uh, what should I think about of Andreas? And then you learn like, oh, Andreas is German. So you have a lot of kind of uh, things you can fill in about me that might help you to kind of uh, uh, predict well, how I might behave. You might think like, okay, Andreas is German. So he likes beer and sausages. He's punctual. He's uh, efficient. He uh, probably drives a fast car. He's great at football. Mm -hmm. It's probably not funny at all and so forth. You have a very complex picture of me just because you know that I'm German. So there's a schema, okay? But even these schemas can kind of be organized by looking at, okay, as a German, how much am I in competition with you? Um, and how high is the status of this group? And thereby you can fill in basically these two organizing principles of competence and warmth. Okay, let me explain that a little bit in more detail. So in the beginning we saw that we basically, when a person is described, we can kind of, all the words they're using, I can use um, two dimensions, warmth and competence to organize them, right? So here we see we can also use warmth and competence to uh, associate groups, to kind of uh, uh, put groups on this diagram, right? So here's like I'm super warm and here's I'm super intelligent. So what you can see here on this graph is like the accumulation of many, many studies where people uh, judge different groups. So this is an American sample. So it is an impression of American uh, kind of stereotypes in 2007. Okay, and so what you can see here is that basically the reference group, the good group, the prototypical group is something like white, housewives, Christians, professionals, middle class. Okay, so most participants kind of see them as the ideal groups. Okay, they're most likely because these groups are part of who they are and hence they rate them high on competence and warmth. And then you have somewhat um, uh, other groups. Like here you can see us, the British, or not us, you guys, the British. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, Jews, whites, Asians, rich, right? They're all kind of judged. You can see, especially, for instance, rich is like really pronounced here. They're co uh, considered to be really high on competence, but very low on cold. So the stereotypical rich person is kind of perceived as uh, uh, very intelligent or intelligent, very competent, but very cold. Okay, so that's kind of like another group where people think like, okay, uh, I can group them into these. And this is my stereotype about them. And that helps me to shape the content within that stereotype, right? You can think about Asians. Asians are cold and they're very intelligent. So Asians in American context almost always means uh, East Asians, Chinese, Japan, Korean and so forth. And here they judge them as intelligent, but as uh, cold and hence I expect them to be computer engineers uh, who do not want to socialize with me and that's how I kind of act towards them, right? That's another stereotype. We have here the kind of people who are low on warmth and also low in competence, right? Poor blacks, Turks, feminists. I always, I, I have trouble explaining that. I'm not sure what feminist is doing there, why they are not very intelligent and very cold, but they are there. Arabs, welfare recipients, okay? So here you have a group that is judged basically as kind of uh, low on warmth and low on competence. And I'll explain a little bit more why these two uh, dimensions evolve, like they evolve. Um, but that's another group, right? And it kind of shapes the way we think about them. Here you have the uh, kind of warm but harmless, right? You have the elderly, retarded, disabled. They're good people, but just completely incompetent. Now, why does this matter? Why does it matter if I kind of uh, categorize a person like this or that? And you can see why it matters because it kind of uh, basically um, instills different behavioral tendencies towards these people. So if we kind of uh, here with the elderly group would kind of connect it, then you can see we have pity for them, right? We kind of think, oh, look, that old person, uh, 
Um, so cute. Look, she's smiling so nicely. She couldn't do anyone any harm, right? Think of Harold Shipman. That's the category, uh, at least uh, based on his age, that he's um, he's a nice person that can no, do no harm because he's old and hence he is not a threat. He's too incompetent to be a real threat, okay? We have admiration, obviously, with people who are like us and you can put your own groups in there, people who are like you, who are you admire and you want to be like them, right? Then we have the groups in this quadrant, right? That instill envy in us. Ah, they have all the money. They have all the cool computer tools that I want. Okay, I want to be like them, but I don't like them. Uh, it's uh, it's envy. I want what they have. I don't want to be like them. I want what they have, right? And then we have contempt here, right? Uh, this is kind of like the uh uh the in this quadrant here right just like poor black people uh they're neither intelligence according to these stereotypes nor are they very warm and hence all i feel for them is contempt and this can exp help us explain why uh we have different behavioral orientations and reactions towards different kind of groups right often people think about oh um, the out group other groups who are in competition with us we only we think of all of these groups in all the unfavorable traits they're stupid and they're cold um, and they but that's not true we have often very ambivalent uh, uh, stereotypes about other groups people we're in competition with we might feel envy and people who we uh, 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 yes, who uh, uh, kind of like we feel warm towards, but um, who are somewhat incompetent, we pity them. Okay, so this helps us to kind of uh, understand how we react towards these people. I think it's really, really important to kind of look at the homeless category. This is almost like, as they point out in the paper, and it's really sad, right, to think about this. This is almost like a sub human category they're so low on warmth and competence that it's often uh, they are not regarded as even part of the human species and if you think about how we react um, to uh, homeless people on the street who ask us for help who beg for help yet we do not help i bet that any other member of any of these groups who begs you for help would at least uh, receive some uh, a minimum amount of help uh, if not more but hence this can explain how we treat the homeless people in our society because we perceive them so low on, on warmth and so low on competence that they're not even uh, at least according to this structure um, um, human very sad but I don't want to talk uh, kind of like uh, uh, swipe that under the, the carpet it's important to point out and it's important to understand that these dimensions matter I mentioned it before and I just want to kind of um, highlight that I think one of the things that dominates the warmth um, judgment is whether we think we're in competition with that group or not. So if I'm a middle class person, I'm in competition with um, the rich people above me. So I judge them as low in warmth and I'm competition with poor people, with welfare recipients. They want to take away my money. Hence, I judge them low in wealth. So uh, warmth comp and competition are often related. Any group that I feel like their success will be good for me is judged to be as warm and as uh, trustworthy and friendly. Status is the other indicator of competence. So if you have something high status, if you are something fancy as a senior lecturer at a university, people automatically think that you are competent. So if you have a high status job, you are automatically perceived as being competent. So status and status high groups are automatically put into the um, uh, highly competent um, a category that explains, for instance, why rich people are so high on a competence. This is obviously often not true. Rich people are often not very competent. They have other competences that made them rich or they just inherited a lot. But this is how we perceive them. Uh, so status and competence are uh, uh, strongly correlated. I think in some studies they're basically the same thing. It's like you, you can't say whether the person judged status or competence. So why do we do these judgments, especially why do we use them for groups? And I think there are these two things 
that kind of makes sense if you look back over the thousands and thousands of years of our evolution if i met you uh, somewhere outside of my camp 10,000 15 20,000 years ago the first thing i want to know are you a friend or a foe right are you on my side or are you not on my side so this is the first kind of judgment my team not my team okay so imagine i think like oh she is a um, foe she's not on my team now i want to know okay how dangerous how competent right so the worst thing i can encounter is somebody who's not on my team who's really strong and competent right so this is what i'm immediately trying to figure out how much danger do you uh, pose to me and do you pose danger if you are not on my team and you're very competent right so it makes sense that we are trying to figure out um whether the other person is on my team or not and whether i use these cues to kind of uh, put you in uh, uh, in these quadrants that we just saw. So that's an important evaluation people make.